Don't think you'll be needing that umbrella. You never know. Hello, Hayden. How are you? I'm great. How are you? This is a fabulous place, isn't it? Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And something in this film happens here. Uh, it's very important, so that's why we are in, in the Colosseum in Rome. But first of all, how, how did you get involved uh, with Jumper? Um, <clears throat> got a phone call from my agent saying that Doug Lyman was making another movie and would I like to meet with him. And uh, I was a big fan of his films and, and was very excited to get a chance to sit down with him. Ended up uh, going to New York and, and hanging out with him a couple of times and going through the script and uh, then he decided to offer me the part, so. Did you, did you have any input in the script and in, in your character? Who is your character? Yeah, you know, that was one of the great things about getting to work with Doug, is that he really invited his actors to, to be a part of that creative process and, uh, and encouraged us to, to try to make the characters our own. You know, so, uh, so we spent a lot of time going through the script and, and trying to define exactly who these people were. You think you're the only one? There's a, a big mythology uh, around around all this. Um, uh, I'm going to ask Jamie about uh, the rules of jumping. He seems to be the guy who knows this for a long this world for a long time. Yeah. Maybe you could tell me what is, for instance, the the jump scar. The jump scar. Well, the jump scar is is pretty much a a tear or, or a ripple in the in the time the the, the time space continuum. Um, when a jumper teleports himself from one location to another, uh, he leaves a little scar behind him uh, that, that only lasts for maybe a few seconds. But as a jumper, you can follow another jumper through their jump scar. Um, and my character does that a couple of times with Jamie. And there are obvious, obviously the bad guys in this film. The bad guys in this film don't have this ability. No. So usually you have a, a superhero movie uh, and you have a, a bad guy with his own powers. In this case you have the, the paladins who are after you, the jumpers. Uh, why? Why is that? Um, well, they see jumpers as, as a threat to the world. You know, their, uh, their feeling is that, you know, no one should have this, 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 this ability and, and that, you know, with ultimate power, you know, one is ultimately corrupted. Um, and, and, and so they want to rid the world of jumpers altogether. Your character uh, uh, finds out uh, almost by chance his power, um, yeah. and he's kind of uh, absorbed by it. Uh, uh, how, where does he come from, your character, uh, exactly, and how does he, he learn to deal with this? Um, well, it kind of you know takes him by surprise the first time it happens, uh, and it's it's it, it 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 comes out of desperation. You know, it's, he's in a near death experience and and is able to teleport himself, you know, out of jeopardy. Um, you know, it's something... And, and there's a place, there's a place he likes very much. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the Ann Arbor Public Library. <laughs> and there's another place, the Sphinx. And the Sphinx, yeah. Uh, what do you say if we jump to Egypt? And yeah. Let's keep this conversation, let's yeah, continue yeah. this conversation there. Let's Sounds go. Sounds good, let's do okay, it. Okay, here we go. All right. One, two, help me. One, three. two, three. Whoa. There we go. There Quite a jump. See, not this bad. is quite a jump. I'm pretty good. You do this often? You know, <laughs> pretty often. <laughs> I was asking about your character. Um, one uh, of his apparently favorite places is a Sphinx or here in, in Egypt. Uh, why is that? What is this desert skull for, for your character? Um, I think he just enjoys the view. <laughs> yeah. There is a, there is a great view. It's a good view from up there. <laughs> and you know, he's, he's a bit of a loner, my character, so I think he enjoys the isolation. All this jumping around uh, in all those uh, running away from Samuel Jackson, yeah. uh, how demanding physically was that? Uh, it, was, it was a lot of physical work. Um, uh, and a lot of getting tossed around and beaten <laughs> up. And, I took a lot of abuse on this movie, you know, from, a lot from Sam, Jamie dished out his, his fair share as well, uh, but you know, I'm always up for that. <laughs> that is good. Uh, you are quite familiar now with this genre of science fiction, action adventure. Uh, how do you feel, how comfortable do you feel doing this and how far, uh, how far do you want to go in um, this kind of genre? I mean, I really, I, I really like the genre. I, uh, you know, I enjoy science fiction films. I like things that 
stimulate the imagination, you know, and get you thinking. Um, and, you know, I had some experience with it with Star Wars films. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm a fan, you know, as, as a fan of movies, I'm a fan of the genre. This is, this is the second time you work with Samuel. Um, were you friends? Were you, did you create a relationship since the, the Star Wars movies? How yeah. was it this time around? Um, it was great. We, uh, we got along really well in the Star Wars movies, and he was you know, very supportive of me when we were making those films. Uh, and he was a friend. Um, and he looks, he looks like the kind of person uh, that is good to be around with. Yeah, uh, he looks like a fun he's guy. He's a fun guy, you know, he is, he is. I mean, the first time you meet him, it's a little intimidating because he's Sam <laughs> Jackson, he's a big guy, you know, you know him from his different characters. Uh, but he's, he's, he's actually, you know, a really nice guy and, you know, he's one of the, one of the boys, he's cool. Uh, do you travel a lot? Do you, do you have a, you <laughs> we jumped from Rome to here, but in your personal life, do you like to travel? Do you, do you have a favorite location in this movie and in real life? Yeah, I, I, I do like to travel a lot. Uh, You know, I think it keeps me sane. <laughs> Felt a lot. Getting to move around a lot. Um, I uh, I don't know. I, I really like Italy, uh, and uh, I spent a lot of time in London. Um, so those are those are high up on my list. But uh, you know, I'm just a generally very transient guy. <laughs> you know, I spent a lot of time living out of a suitcase. Did you? Uh, this film uh, is based on a on a, a novel. Did you uh, read that novel? Did it help you uh, creating this character? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't read the, the book um, Jumper, but it wasn't really important to Doug that I did. You know, I think he was really just sort of taking the concept and the general um, sort of uh, you know platform of the book and mm -hmm. applying it to his film, but wasn't really looking to make it a, a you know fleet adaptation. Of it. We'll also then wait at the side of the intersection. Doug Lehman seems to be, or at least he created a, a reputation as a, a director who's very uh, challenging to work with. Uh, how is he as a director? How he's challenging? Nothing, nothing, nothing challenging. It, um, and when it was challenging, it was challenging the best way. Uh, you know, I like a good challenge. So <laughs> this one seemed like a so, very good challenge. So, so it was a good fit. But now, I, you know. He's, he's, I think, one of the truly great filmmakers right now. Uh, um, and uh, there, there, there is a, a very young, very young, like, it's not a very young cast, but it's a young cast in this film. How did you all get along? Did you met before? Uh, how fun was it to be on set with uh, all these people? It was great. Um, you know, it was really my first time making a movie uh, with, you know, people my own age. and. Um, Does it make it more fun that way? Definitely, you know, because you share similar interests and you know you like to do the same things. Uh, so we would we would hang out offset. You know, Jamie and I spent a lot of time hanging out in our trailers, listening to music together, and playing video games. And uh, you know, so it was, it was all around you know a good atmosphere. People people have had fun on this film. And do you think uh, in, in uh, the film is above all uh, very fun, uh, very entertaining? But is there more to it than uh, simple entertainment? Absolutely. You know, uh, Doug's a very smart guy, you know, yeah. and his films... He likes to work the subtext of the film. Yeah, yeah, no, he, you know, very, very, you know, very layered movies. Um, you know, a lot of the layers you won't necessarily pick up on if you don't, if you don't necessarily know about them. Um, but, you know, I think he tried to draw some, you know, similarities between the conflict You know, mm -hmm. going on between jumpers and and, and, uh, and paladins to what was going on in the Middle East. You know, uh, you know. But if you don't know about it, you might not find it. This is something you talk on set, or is it something that is no, not a script that he no, wants to. No, not so much. I mean, it, you know, it's really his prerogative as a filmmaker to instill that. You know, uh, as an actor working on the movie, you're just concerned with things that pertain to your character. You know, you're not really thinking about that level of, of storytelling. Okay, hey then, it was a pleasure. Right. I have to jump back to Rome, so, right, well, bye-bye. <laughs> See right. you next time. Good to see you. Take a deep breath. Why are you walking? I like walking for change. It makes me feel normal.